When scientists need to know what's happening on the Earth's surface, they often look down from space. These are great, but they don't give me everything. I need biomass. I need forest stand height. I need moisture conditions. I need to know more, and I just can't catch a break with all this cloud cover. I think this is a job for SAR. No, not you. Out of the way, Sal. Optical data can't provide information about the Earth's surface and cloudy conditions. But in our mission to protect our forests, we have another option. Spaceborne SAR, or Synthetic Aperture Radar, is an all-weather imaging technology. It does more than take a simple snapshot. SAR sensors can collect data at different wavelengths and polarizations to paint a more complete picture of what's happening down below. SAR can not only see through clouds, but also provides unique information about structural features and moisture conditions on the Earth's surface. SAR sensors transmit signals at different wavelengths. In radar, these wavelengths are often grouped into bands. The most commonly used are X, C, and L. Depending on the band, the emitted signal can penetrate into forest canopies and provide information about the canopy structure or even what lies below. Let's get deep here for a minute. Each of our superhero wavelengths specialize in monitoring different aspects of forest structure. I'm X-Band. I monitor the top of the forest. Some may call me shallow, but I keep watch over the canopy to spot new holes indicating deforestation has occurred. Hiya! I'm C-Band, and I monitor the forest's mid-level leaves and branches. I can tell you a bit more about what's happening underneath the canopy. Oh, hello there. I'm L-Band. I can tell you what's happening at different levels of the forest stand and can get deeper into the forest, including trunks. When a SAR sensor sends out a signal, it not only measures the amount of energy that returns, but it also records how the emitted signal has interacted with a surface. SAR can transmit and receive microwave signals at different orientations of both the signal sent out and the signal reflected back. This is referred to as polarization. All right, C, I've got a recon mission and you're just the wavelength to do it. Could you go to a few different places and give me the lay of the land? Sure, just tell me which way to polarize. Horizontally. Let's bounce! When a horizontally polarized wave hits a man-made structure, the main scattering mechanism experienced is double bounce. When the incoming signal is captured in the same polarization, H in this case, it's expected to obtain higher values than with other polarizations. What did you find? It was a building. Knew it. All right, for your next mission, you're heading out vertical. Waves that travel into a forest and through branches, leaves, and limbs go on quite a journey. Ow! 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 When the surface is covered by forest, the wavelengths can depolarize, meaning they bounce back with a different polarization than what they had going down. This is mainly due to volume scattering mechanisms that help better understand a forest structure. This is why HV or VH polarizations are better for forest mapping. I was changed by the forest. You couldn't possibly understand me now. Actually, I can. When the surface is bare soil or calm water, vertical signals remain polarized but experience surface scattering, in this case, indicating a flat deforested area. Uh-oh. With the data collected by SAR, scientists can determine the health of a forest and identify when intervention is needed. Bad news, boss. That place where we thought there would be a forest? No forest. Huh. Thanks for the update, C. Thanks to SAR technology, we can see what's going on in our forests around the world and help keep them healthy and thriving. SAR. Preventative care for forests.